Have you ever wondered where fuel for future nuclear fusion reactors like ITER will come from? Have you ever wondered how an area which holds 40% of Canada's population was able to completely phase out coal and also completely eliminate smog days? Have you ever wondered how a device can both produce clean electricity for a large population as well as produce radiomedical isotopes to treat cancer? Well, if you guessed it right, you may have guessed a nuclear power reactor technology called the CANDU or the Canadian Deuterium Nuclear Reactor. The CANDU is an innovative Canadian legacy and is an amazing reactor technology. It's actually one of my favorite. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about demystifying nuclear technologies by simplifying them. In this video, I'll be sharing five surprising facts about the CANDU reactor technology. We're gonna start with fact number one at CANDU reactors have helped the province of Ontario, which holds 40% of Canada's population, completely eliminate coal electricity production, as well as eliminate smog days. Well, if you've wondered what is Ontario, well, Ontario is a province in Canada. Yes, Canada does not have states like the United States, but it has provinces. And this province is a major province within the country, which holds cities like Toronto, Ottawa, and also wonders of the world like Niagara Falls. Well, how did Ontario do this? Well, it was throughout several decades, but a very important technology played a significant role, which was the CANDU reactor technology. It helped provide the electricity to phase out coal, ultimately reduce greenhouse gases by 89%. Yes, 89% reduction. So quarter of the province in 2007 was getting of its electricity from that of coal power production. And that went from 25% that in 2007 to that of 0% in 2014. Yes, that's a major difference. Smog days, which went from around 53 smog days in, in that of 2005, went from 53 in 2005 to that of zero in 2015. So within a span of 10 years, this province completely eliminated smog days in that area. So as you know, people in Ontario have never faced smog days again. Now to put that into perspective, removing coal eliminated around 30 megatons of greenhouse gas emissions. So that's equivalent to around taking 7 million vehicles off the road. As you can see, nuclear power reactor technologies come with significant environmental benefits as well as to that of human health. The people of Ontario, we breathe fresh air. And when you come visit Canada, you realize how fresh the air is even within cities like Toronto. Fact number two is that CANDU reactors produce radiomedical isotopes. Yes, you heard that right. Nuclear power reactors can produce more than just electricity. And CANDUs are very unique because they can produce radiomedical isotopes and electricity at the same time. Now, how does this reactor do this? Well, it's simple. The reactor vessel is called the calandria. It's a large vessel which allows the placement of different different isotopes within the core. Now, as the reactor is operating, these isotopes are irradiated. So just like baking cookies, these isotopes are harvested and then shipped off to medical facilities across the world. Now, CANDU reactors in Ontario produce around 50% of the world's cobalt-60, which is a very important isotope that's used for treatments like the Electa Gamma Knife surgery, so that's used for brain tumors and brain cancers, also gamma sterilization of medical equipment. So a large majority of the world's medical equipment is gamma sterilized through cobalt-60. This was very, very important, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. CANDU reactors can produce a vast variety of other radiomedical isotopes as well, like molybdenum-99 or moly-99, which is used to diagnose heart disease and also cancers. It's used as a tracer material. This one's a hard one to pronounce, but lititium-177, which is used to neuroendocrine tumors and also prostate cancers. Lastly, helium-3 is another isotope. It isn't a medical isotope, but it's an isotope which is important used in quantum computing, also neutron research, border security, and medical imaging. So as you can see, CANDU reactors not only save lives through mitigating the release of greenhouse gas emissions, but also through the production of radiomedical isotopes. It's an incredible technology. Let's jump into fact number three, which is a CANDU reactor holds a world record for running consecutively for 1,106 days nonstop. That's more than three years. Well, which CANDU reactor unit achieved this record? Well, it was Darlington Unit 1, which achieved this record. And how did it achieve this record? And why are CANDU reactors 
running nonstop for so long? Well, can do reactors have the unique ability to be refueled while operating? So imagine driving your car and then having something fuel it at the same time. So robotic arms are able to load fresh fuel into the reactor and remove spent fuel as the reactor is operating. This is very different from other conventional reactors, which require spent fuel to be removed and the reactor completely shut down before fuel is exchanged. Can do is very different. As you can see, the robotic arms help the reactor remove spent fuel and then load in fresh fuel as the reactor is operating. Why is this world record relevant? Why is achieving three years of nonstop power on for the Kandu reactor an important feat? Well, the reason why is because our world is energy hungry and our grids need to maintain a base load energy supply. Now, what is base load? Base load is the lowest amount of electricity that a grid needs to maintain at all times. So that when you turn on your lights at 3 a.m., those lights turn on. And when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing, like for that of renewable resources, you have electricity. Usually in grids, you'll see that base load is maintained through fossil fuel energy production, which is either coal or natural gas. And as you know, those are greenhouse gas emitting. Another important source of base load is nuclear power. It's because it's running 24 seven around the clock. It's not an intermittent source of energy dependent on the sun or the wind. And it also produces zero greenhouse gas emissions. So like I said, nuclear power is unique because it produces zero greenhouse gas emissions and has that high capacity factor. So what is capacity factor? Capacity factor is the percentage of, of time that our energy source is producing electricity throughout the year. Can do reactors have a very high capacity factor. They're producing electricity for majority of the year and maintaining that base load energy. So for can do reactors, having that world record of over 1,106 days is great news because it goes to show that this technology is reliable and it can be used to maintain base loads for cities, countries, and provinces across our world. And as a result, this ultimately prevents blackouts from happening, which can have quite destructive impacts on world economies of, of different regions. All right, so let's jump into the next fact. Fact number four is that nuclear fusion is impossible without can-do reactor technology. Well, an article recently was published speaking to a shortage of tritium fuel may leave fusion energy with an empty tank. So many don't realize it, but fusion reactors are not simply fueled by air. They're fueled by a mix of tritium and deuterium. They can be fueled with other fuel sources as well, but tritium deuterium fusion is the easiest to achieve and nuclear fusion is not easy to achieve. At the moment, it's going through experimental phases like that of with that of ITER, also other projects like JET. And you guessed it right, this isotope tritium is very rare. It costs around $30,000 a gram. The only commercial source for tritium is 19 CANDU reactors across the world, most of which are located in Canada. Now, the article also states that the luckiest thing to happen for fusion in the world is that CANDU reactors produce tritium as a byproduct. And if not for CANDU reactors, deuterium tritium fusion would be an unattainable dream. Yes, ITER, the largest experimental fusion reactor in the world, which is being constructed in Southern France, is set to start very soon. And it's gonna need a lot of tritium to operate. And it's also expected to consume most of the world's tritium supplies, leaving little for other experimental reactors. Tritium supplies will be a bottleneck for future of nuclear fusion. And you know what that means, we need more CANDU reactors. Fact number five is CANDU reactors can use spent fuel from pressurized water reactors, the most popular reactor type, and use it directly in that of CANDU reactors. And this is called DUPIC. What does DUPIC mean? It is direct use of pressurized water reactor fuel and CANDU. Yes, you guessed it right. You can take spent fuel from the most popular reactor type called the PWR pressurized water reactor and use it directly in a CANDU reactor. How is this possible? Well, the reason why is because pressurized water reactors use enriched uranium. So as the fuel is used up and it goes to a baseline, it's disposed of as spent fuel. Now, what you could do is you can optimize these bundles and stick them directly into a CANDU. The reason why is because CANDU uses heavy water. CANDU reactors have many benefits, such as enhancing neutron economy. So the spent fuel of one reactor or the waste product of one reactor is even better than fresh natural uranium fuel in a CANDU. Yes, so you're basically recycling your fuels. And what are the benefits? Number one, you don't need to directly dispose of 
PWR fuel, all right? So that's the first benefit. You're reducing the amount of waste that you're producing. Number two is the amount of spent fuel from a can-do reactor is cut in half since dupic fuel has a higher burnout than natural uranium. So yes, dupic fuel is superior to that of natural uranium. It has more juice left in it, which is called burnout, than that of natural uranium. So you're actually cutting down the spent fuel of can-do reactors in that of half. And number three is that this had the benefits of maintaining natural uranium resources that are preserved for future years. So how did Dupic come about? It was first developed in the year 1991 alongside South Korea, Canada, and the United States. Now, although it has yet to be commercialized on a large scale, it has shown considerable promise. It's incredible to know how versatile Kandu is. All right, so if you wanna learn more about Kandu reactors across the world, you're more than welcome to check out this link in this video where I go through every single Kandu reactor on our planet. So hope you enjoyed these five surprising facts about the Kandu reactor. And till then, take care. My name is Osama Big, signing off. Thanks for watching.